Hello, this is Joe and welcome back to the channel. If you follow me, you know that I've had terrible weather for weeks on end and tonight I'm supposed to have uh, mostly clear. I'm not quite sure what that means, but it, it looks like there's going to be 30 to 40 percent cloud cover still. So I'm not going to really be able to image uh, my normal deep sky uh, objects. However, what I am planning on doing is trying out some planetary. So lately I've been watching a lot of my YouTuber friends and I got to say they've really inspired me. Um, James from the DSO Imagers channel and Joe, the digital astronomer. Uh, of course, Pat from Heavenly Backyard does some great stuff. Uh, Logan's done some, but just very recently I've, I've watched uh, Aventish from the Deep Sky Hunter. And he had just was talking about, you know, the planets being in opposition pretty soon. And if you got a clear night to go out and try and get it. So, you know what, Aventish, I'm going to take your advice. I'm going to see if I can't, uh, I can't grab Saturn and Jupiter tonight if possible. Um, so what I did, I don't ha I've never done planetary before. And I know you guys are going to laugh at me and that's okay. You know, if you planetary astrophotographers that if you do watch my channel, um, I'm not sure why because I've never done planetary, but if you do, uh, I want you guys to laugh at me because I really don't know what I'm doing and it's going to be kind of fun to try it out. So what I'm going to attempt to do is using my Edge HD8, uh, I don't have a Barlow or anything like that, so I'm just going to use the T adapter. Uh, I'm going to be imaging at F10 and uh, what I did was is I took out my, my guiding cam here for the... Uh, for my OAG and I put it as my imaging camera. <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, I just calculated out 133 millimeters backspace. Uh, I've got this uh, little connector right here that will allow me to uh, put the camera, slide the camera in and out a little bit with a little extender on it. And then I, I, I actually left the OAG in here just for backspacing. I'm not quite sure on the backspacing for planetary because since it's right in the center, and the planets are so tiny, I really don't think the backspacing is going to play as big of a part, of course, um, because I'm, I don't think I'm going to really have stars or a star field to worry about at the edges. I'm probably going to be cropping in tremendously. At least that's my guess. Um, I recently had uh, my electronic autofocuser go out on me, and I had the old 12-volt version. It just wouldn't recognize... Uh, no computer, I couldn't get any computer to recognize it anymore. So uh, I sent it off to ZWO here in the States, and they sent me back uh, another one. It's it's the newer version. It's the 5 volt instead of the 12 volt. And uh, But I got it on, back up on here, and I've been testing it, and it seems to be working. Computer recognizes it right away, so I'm going to be using that tonight. And then just my um, one and a quarter inch filter wheel with this little uh, ASI 174mm mini. Now I've got a 120mm mini and looking at the the pixel size on it compared to the 174, I, I wanna say that I think I should be using the 120 uh, for the planets and maybe the 174 for doing solar or lunar. Uh, but again, I've never tried this. I just thought, you know what, I'll just pop this out of here, pop it in here. It's a quick and dirty setup. And we're going to see what I get tonight. So unfortunately, my video of me capturing Saturn and, and Jupiter uh, was corrupted. But what I did was is I used Fire Capture in order to capture it. And then I went to Auto Stacker here. And I, I loaded in the three. Uh, I, I took it in RGB and I loaded in the three videos. And I, I loaded them in all at once. And I'm going to analyze and this is the graph that I get, and it's not that great. It's not really good at all. And Saturn was really low. Uh, it was about the 25 degrees, 24 degrees, something like that when I, when I tried to take it. And what I noticed is, is that uh, if I normalize the stack at 70% and I sharpen uh, with uh, blend raw for 0%, and then I resample to 2x, I'm actually getting some okay images. They're not fantastic by any means, and I figured out why, and I'd like to share that with you. But first, let me show you what the images did come out looking like. Okay, here's the green, and you can see it's really fuzzy, really pixelated, and maybe even out of focus. 
Um, again, I was just trying stuff out, and I'm pretty sure that the camera that I used, the pixels were just too big for not having a Barlow. I'll explain why in a few, but um, here's a, the blue and here's the red, and the red actually came out the best. You could actually see um, one of the Cassini divisions between the rings here and here on this one. And instead of using Registax to, to um, go a little bit further with with the edits on each one which I should have um, I just brought them in here and I combined them together and then I just did a little bit of tweaking in inside of pics and site and this is the final image that I got I know that it's not that great and that's really not the way you should do it but this seems extremely either oversampled or I, you can see the lines I'm not sure if you can make it out if I zoom in you can really see um, that I believe I was extending beyond the capabilities of that camera for my focal length. And I think that if I would have used the 120 uh, mm mini that I had, I probably would have got a lot better results from this. But I wanted to show you nonetheless um, because I am planning on improving this somewhat, hopefully, in the near future. And then the Saturn came, or Jupiter came out much nicer. Um, here's the, the red and a green and a blue. And the final image of Jupiter came out pretty good. And I sharpened this up quite a bit. And uh, you could see that sharpening effect uh, right in here and stuff. But, I mean, it was the only way to get it even resembling something of, of Jupiter, to be completely honest. So wasn't super thrilled with these images. So here's what I found out. I mean, because of this, I needed to go find out why this didn't come out as good as I thought it would. And I really learned a lot and I wanted to share that with you. So it turns out there's a formula for calculating the pixel size of your imaging camera when doing planetary photography. And I found out that what you really want to do, it's a rule of thumb, is to take 5 and times it by the pixel size. Then you divide it by the focal ratio of your telescope and that will give you the Barlow size that you need in order to get the best images possible with the camera and the telescope that you're using. So in my case, the other night I was using, we will take five, and I was using that uh, ASI 174, and that's got a pixel size of 5.9 microns, and we would divide that by F10 or by 10, and that comes out to 2.95. So I would need at least a Barlow of 3x in order to get the best image, or a much better image than I took anyway the other night. So we're going to head over to High Point Scientific's website. They've got a fantastic article and explanation of all of this and a really cool chart that, so that you can quickly see what I'm talking about. So here's that formula that I was using. It was pixel size. They say time seeing conditions. So what they're saying is, is that you multiply it by 5 uh, for your average seeing conditions. And then if you have good you multiply it by six and if you have uh, fantastic better than average then you multiply it by seven but it makes it real simple to look down here into their formula we're going to click on their chart and you'll see that when i times it by five and i came out with the chart over here where it says poor scene conditions um, this closely matches my native f10 focal ratio which is what i was using my telescope and that's with the 5.9 micron pixel size of that 174 and of course you look over here and it says 3x but if I had great seeing conditions then you would use a 4 or a 5 times Barlow well I already had issues even just trying to get the planets into my view or to find them with my telescope so I don't really know if I want to go above a 2 times Barlow right now because I'm just starting out so if you come over here to the two times Barlow, and that, that's what I was thinking about getting, for an F10 scope, which is what I have, I would want a camera with 2.9 micron pixels. So then you can come down here and you can look at the recommended cameras, and there are small pixels, and there's the ASI 462, and the 290, and then the QHY version of the 462. The camera I was using the other night where I got less than adequate images was the 174 and you can see it's got the 5.9 microns so if I wanted to continue to use my 174 as my planetary camera 
I would need to go invest in a four times or five times bar low. But what I think I'm going to do is uh, enter into the realm of planetary a little slower and I'm going to go with the 2x bar low and I'm going to grab one of these suggested cameras down here, most likely the ASI-462. I also plan to use it as a all sky camera when I'm not actually taking planetary, which shouldn't be that often because I'm mostly a deep sky object person and uh, but I do want to dabble a little bit in some planetary. So that's what my plan is going to be. I'm going to try and go for this ASI 462 and just the plain two times Barlow, most likely the Celestron version. Uh, I hear that they make a pretty decent one. One more piece of equipment that I'm going to get in order to do the planetary imaging is an atmospheric dispersion corrector. Because of where I live, Saturn only gets to about 36 degrees up in the sky, and I have a lot of atmosphere to shoot through. I think that if I was going to go the mono route, uh, which is what I used to shooting, I would probably skip the ADC. But because I plan on doing full color, you know, one shot color, and mainly because I want to use the camera as my all sky camera at when I'm not shooting planetary, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and grab this ADC, and it, I think what its main purpose is, is to uh, get the colors correct for shooting through the atmosphere that you're shooting through. And if, you, if we scroll down here, you'll see that um, there's some examples of without the ADC and then with the ADC. And um, the one that strikes me the, the most right here is this one of Mars where um, you could see just the color shift of the red on the bottom and the blue on the top without the ADC and then with the ADC. Um, it's a little bit cleaner than when you're even aligning the RGB channels. And this looked a lot like uh, my image of Saturn. This is very reminiscent right here of my image that I took of Saturn. And I think that with the ADC, at least where the latitude that I live at, um, I think it would make a pretty big difference if I was going to be shooting a lot of planetary. Um, again, I don't really plan on shooting a lot, but I don't like to waste my clear skies when I do have them. And so I'd like to get the best image that I can get when I'm doing it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video and you learned some stuff. I know I've learned quite a bit uh, in the last few days of doing all this research into planetary photography, and I'm, I'm kind of getting into it a little bit. Uh, if uh, For those of you who are really good or seasoned planetary photographers already, uh, if you want to give me any tips or tricks, uh, just drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. I think uh, other viewers would like to read them as well because I'm just starting out. But uh, I was a little disappointed in my images but at the same time I want to show them and share them because I'm looking forward to improving on them and now that I know some of these uh, what I call secret formulas of planetary imaging uh, I think that uh, I'll do a lot better now that I kind of have an idea anyway of, of what I should be doing. I'm not saying that I know what I'm doing yet, far from it, but at least I'm, I feel like I'm on the right path now. And so I'm really excited to see how this develops over time and uh, some of the images that I get. And if you're um, also looking to print some of these amazing images, um, you're going to want to check out my video that I did right here on printing your astrophotography.